people tell me all the time how they like AE. And I tell them all the time, well, between motion and shake, I can do everything AE can, After Effects. And they say, well, I don't understand how does motion and shake work together better than anything else. And I'm just going to show you real quick how well we can intertwine these two apps, okay? So I'm going to throw down an explosion here real quick. Apply for my particles. Um, let's back it up to the beginning here. Now you can see we have an explosion. Let's close our explosion up. Let's go to our inspector, our object, and that'll change the emitter tab when you select the emitter. And I'm going to take it and make it a 3D. Okay? So now, as you can see, you can't tell it, but it's in 3D right now. And I'm going to show you how we can demonstrate that. So now that I've got this explosion, I'm going to add a camera. Okay? Yes, I want to switch to 3D. And now that I have this camera, I'm going to add a behavior and to this behavior is going to be called sweep so I'll go to add behavior camera sweep and under the behavior sweep at the end I'm going to make it 360 so that will sweep the camera completely around and I'm going to take my sweep behavior in my mini timeline and shrink it down to the length of my explosion and now when I play this you can see our camera is sweeping around our explosion and it is definitely in 3D Let's make sure I have everything on. Let's turn on my compass. Let's turn on my inset view. Let's turn on my 3D grid. And let's turn on the scene icons, just so I can have everything rolling. OK, now we have this basic 3D scene with our camera dollying around our explosion so it demonstrates to 3D. Now, let's do something else. Let's add another group. And we're going to make this group. 2D. So I'm going to make this group 2D by switching this um, 3D icon to the 2D icon. Let's, um, let's add some text. Well, first, let's make a shape for our text path to follow. So I'm going to get my shape, and I'm going to go through here like this and just create a little semicircle here just to demonstrate this. I'm going to hit return to close my shape. And there we go. You can take the width all the way down if you want. It don't matter. Now we have this little shape in the shape of a path. Now let's go back to our group. Let's add some text. We'll just say to be or not to be. Okay. Now we have our text. So now we're going to set up our text to be on this path. So let's go to our layouts tab. Under layout method, I'm going to put path. Now that opens up my path options. I'm going to go to my path options and I'm going to select geometry and that will open up this little shape source well. I'm going to drag my shape that I just made into that well. Now that applies that text to the shape and I can turn off my shape now. That gets rid of that. Now, under my path options, let's move my text back to the beginning here. Under my path options, there's a path offset. And this path offset is the parameter you want to animate to get it to follow your, your text path. So we can start it here, like this. Turn on my record button. Set a keyframe. Move forward to about right there. And then we'll animate this path offset up to the top. Like that. Turn off my record button. Now we have this little quick animation where my text follows the path and our explosion is in 3D but our text isn't and it goes on around like that. We can take our explosion group and maybe turn, uh, move it over just a little bit like this. Center it up a tad. And there we go. We have a quick little animation. Okay. So how do we get this into shake? Well, go to file and let's save it. I'll save as and we'll name it. We'll call it Untitled A. And we'll save it to my desktop. Okay, now after I saved it, this little icon up here comes lit up. So now all I gotta do is click and drag. As you can see, I have Shake already open. I'm gonna click and drag this little icon. When I do that, I can move it around. Okay, I'm gonna click and hold. And I'm gonna Command Tab over to Shake. And I'm just gonna drop this right there in my shake project. And there we have that. I'm going to de-interlace it because 
I don't probably need to do interlacing. So I'm just going to make some copies here of the same node, and I'm just going to uh, throw these into my deinterlace here, just so I can get a deinterlaced picture. It's the same thing. You guys don't have to worry about this. You can deinterlace any way you choose. And now, as you can see, let's go to our globals. It's not, as, it's not in real time like motion is, but as you can see, let me go up here and render a flipbook. Okay. We'll just render frames 1 through 50. And say render. It's going to render a flipbook, and here comes our text. It's going to go around. Now, I love the quality of, of Shake's renders better than I like the quality of any other application, that professional application that Apple's got. I love the quality of their renders. Now, as you can see, you might want to go in and add some motion blur and, and, you know, all that good stuff to get rid of some of the artifacts. And, you know, you can touch up. I'm just trying to show you how they work, how well they work together. Okay? It's on frame 30. And it's going to blaze on through to frame 50. And I can play it back while it renders, if, if that's what you all would like. But I'm going to try and let it get through. It's on frame 40 now. So now I guess I can go ahead and play it. And there we go. There's our project that we had in motion right here inside Shake. And we can work on it and add any filters within Shake that we wish. It's completely up to you. You know, you can go to color. You can add a brightness filter as a demonstration. And as you can see, that brightens that up there real good. I mean, just you can just take what you made in motion, particles or whatever, bring it into Shake, and lay the shebang on it with Shake's powerful tool set. Hope you guys have learned something and why we enjoy Mix and Shake in motion together. And if there was one app together instead of two separate apps, we would be in heaven. So this is why we enjoy using them, this is how easy it is to use them, and this is why I would rather have these two apps than After Effects any day. Thanks for watching, see you next time.